Okay, so today we're going to be making a fitted crib sheet. I have um, two yards of fabric here and you don't want to use a knit for this. You want to use a nice cotton woven because the knits will stretch in too many directions and fit funky. So I have a cotton woven that I have pre-washed and it is cut 45, well it's not cut because 45 across is what it is on the bolt, times um, 69 inches long so just short of two yards and what I have already done is surged all of the edges so that they don't unravel if you don't have a serger what you want to do is add an extra inch to your length so you would cut it by 70 inches so that you can fold it and then sew it so that you have a finished edge so that you would you know ignore the surging but you would fold it over and then sew it so you would have a finished edge next we are going to fold this in fourths because we are going to cut corners here so we want all the corners to be together You don't have to do it all at once. You can certainly cut each of the four corners separately, but why do something four times when you can do it just once? Okay, so I have all four corners here and I am going to cut eight by eight out of here. So I'm going eight inches up These are scrap. You can use them to make some cloth wipes or something because 8x8 is the perfect size for that. But so now we have a corner that is 8 inches by 8 inches and I'm going to head over to my sewing machine. Okay, so here we have that fabric with the corner cut out, that 8x8 inch square, and I am going to sew the pockets by just taking these two pieces and flipping them so that they are right sides together. Line up the outside edge and then figure out the inside edge and if you've got a serger then just serge them together. If you don't then do a straight stitch and sew them together. So now you've got your little pocket for one corner and you're going to repeat that on all four corners. So here it is again just in case we've got our square. Just put the two pieces together, right sides together. Line up the outside edge and then match up the inside so that if you didn't cut it perfectly you can make the arrangements and so now maybe you'll notice I'm not cutting off a lot here because I don't really want to change the size of the sheet but you do always want to cut off a little bit that gives your machine the best chance at a good surge. 
All right, I'm gonna do the last two and then we'll come back for the elastic. All right, so I'm done sewing my pockets and I am back at my machine and I have a ruler and a marking pen and four pieces of elastic that I've already cut to 12 inches each. And you are going to first mark the six inch mark on each of these pieces of elastic. In other words, the halfway point. So for each one, I need to know what the halfway point is. That's gonna help us get a better stretch. And then, at each of the pocket seams, you are going to measure 12 inches on each side. Because you're going to stretch that elastic, that 12 inch elastic is going to stretch over a span of 24 inches. So I measure 12 inches to the left. And, well, actually I did the right first, I suppose, but measure 12 inches to the left and 12 inches to the right on each of the four corners. So that was one. On the short sides, your elastic is almost going to meet. Like here's 12 inches on the short side and you can see between my two marks, there's only about three inches in between them. That's okay, that'll give you a nice, tight, snug fit. All right, I'm gonna do this two more times and then I'll come back. Okay, now I wanna set the machine to sew the elastic with a three-step zigzag. On my machine, that is this one, the number eight. So I'm going to set it to a number eight and I'm going to make it a nice, a little bit longer stitch length. Two and a half stitch length so that it, got, it gives me some good stretch. Oh, I don't want number 11. There we go. So the three step zigzag five width, two and a half stitch length. And doesn't matter which side you start with, find one of your marks. Where'd they all go? Here. Yep. And Just right where you surged it, or if you didn't have a serger, you know, fold it over. Just right there at the edge, line up the elastic with that mark you made. And get it tacked down first. My machine does that tacking stitch before I start to kind of help. But do a couple stitches before you start pulling. If you've got the option to keep your needle lowered, definitely do that because now you are going to lean back and where the seam is, that's your halfway point, you're gonna pull the elastic to match up with that seam. And that's how tight you're gonna pull it when you sew it. So keep one hand on that end of the elastic and the other hand right up here to kind of guide it. Or once you've leaned and marked how far you need to pull the elastic, you can grab it a little bit closer and then make adjustments as you go. So I'm grabbing it a little bit closer and here I go. So I'm making that three-step zigzag 
just right over the top of my elastic and I'm pulling it so that the mark I made at the six inches is right at my corner pocket seam. With the elastic you really do have to use both hands to keep it pulled the way you want it and also feeding through the machine on the back end. Okay, so I've passed the halfway point, so I'm going to find my end mark and pull my elastic that far. Which really though, at least with this elastic, I am pulling this as tight as it will go. So, just do the best you can. Just pull it as tight as it'll go and you'll be fine. The end is the hardest part because you run out of stuff to hold on to. You really have to use a lot of finger pressure. And then I use my locking stitch. Cut off your pieces, and there you go. There's one pocket. And from the outside, you can't see the elastic. You just see that it's kind of ruffled. And let me just see if I can get it close here so you can see the stitching. There's that three-step zigzag just right to the edge. All right, I'm going to show you one more time because we've got to do this four times on the four corners. But you guys are smart. You don't really need to see this four times the same step. But I'll show it to you one more time. And then you'll be able to finish on your own. All right, I'm pretty much starting. This is the short side. So they're pretty much almost touching. That's good. That'll give you a nice tight fit. Which on a crib mattress, tight is good. Okay, so I sewed that first little bit. I'm going to find my corner seam and pull it. To measure. I'm holding it a little bit closer to my machine so I have more control. And just go right over top of it with your three step. Now see, I didn't pull quite as hard on this time, I guess, because my halfway mark, I'm pulling it as hard, but it's not going to get to there. That's okay. It's not an exact science. If you're pulling as tight as you can, that's good enough. The measurements are really just there to give you a goal.
And there we go. There's the other pocket. Trim off your strings and do it two more times. You'll be ready to put it on the mattress. And here's our finished product on the crib. Fits nice and snug around the corners. Looks good. And you know you made it with love. Thanks for joining me.